<laughs> <Ooh -hoo. laughs> Have you all noticed something different? I got dreadlocks. Yes, and by the way, this is my real hair. If you go back to my videos way back, like two years ago, you, you, you will see that I had dreadlocks. Well, I cut my dreadlocks and then became bald, but I saved my hair. I saved my locks. See, this is my real hair. See, as a shaman and as a high priest, I'm not allowed to let anyone touch my head, let alone touch my hair. Remember Samson in the Bible? Samson and Delilah? God told him, Jehovah, don't let no woman, no, let, let no bitch touch your hair or touch your head. But he couldn't keep it in his pants, you know? So he had to let Delilah cut his hair. And God go, really, bitch? You let her cut your hair? Fuck you. All right. You know, I got I to gotta act it out. You know, <laughs> I got to act it out. But it's in, it's in Leviticus, too. Men are not allowed to cut their hair. They're not allowed to cut their sides. That's why a lot of Hasidim Jews have their hairs growing on the side. Now, another thing that I did not reveal to people, but you can also look it up, is that my father was Jewish. That doesn't make me Jewish, because in order for you to be Jewish, you have to have a mother who was Jewish. That's the only way you can be Jewish. But my father was Jewish. So it is in my bloodline, which is why I carry the Star of Jehovah, because the Jewish runs in my blood. In the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, the, the Spain exposed many Jews and the Moors and the Jews and the liars and thieves and degenerates and the insane people in the insane asylums. Spain threw all these people out of Spain at the latter part of the uh, 15th century, and they ended up coming to the Americas. So in the Dominican Republic, which is uh, was Hispaniola, we have a lot of Jews there, because of the original Jews that ended up coming to the West uh, from the expulsion from Spain after Queen Isabella and, and King um, Philip of Aragon united Spain and created the Catholic Spanish system in that country, then they exposed the Arabs and the Jews. So there's a lot of Jewish blood in the Dominican Republic, and I am one of those who has Jewish blood, which explains why this is part of my look. Always has been. I just always kept it secret. <laughs> First, I want to say thank you for my subscribers, my new subscribers, and those who have always been giving. So I'm going to go with it one by one with um, each one of you, okay? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say thank you to Melissa Hutton, who donated four days ago a nice chunk of change. <laughs> uh, someone anonymously gave some money. And they did that nine days ago. John Roberts. John Roberts. This is for you. You donated over a hundred dollars sixteen days ago. Veron Ver Vernicia Graves also donated a boatload of cash. Uh nineteen days ago. Thank you so much. My baby brother in Chelmsford, uh, Massachusetts, Bruce Lindstad, always, always donates all kinds of money to me. Thank you, Bruce. I love you. Um, Bruce, I'm going to come to the Chelmsford High School to do my presentations. I'm putting all of that into works. And until I get an actual go-ahead by the Department of Education in that town of Chelmsford, and then approved by the, the, the high school and principal in Chelmsford High, then I will start making the proceeds of heading to the town of Chelmsford to make this happen for June. I didn't forget. I'm just doing all my work in the New York sector until I'm invited to then talk the real stuff and the money has already been raised, my brother Bruce. I did not forget. I'm going to come with a bang and with bearing gifts. <laughs> okay. okay. The next person is Gail Morkel. 
Merkel, you uh, 28 days ago also did a boatload of cash. <laughs> Thank you so much. The theater season begins in a month, and I have plenty of uh, of money being donated for me to get this done. But remember, the goal is 10,000, and we got 2,800 or 2,300 something. I gotta look at it. I gotta call. I hire new staff to put me on track and keep things going on. Um, Alisa Powell. Donated as well. Uh, then we have someone who donated anonymously. Another person. Who, uh, I mean, you know, it's about eighty people. Uh, so, and this now we're going backwards, you know. But these are the recent uh, people who have donated, and I want to thank you very much for that. Okay, thank you. Love you. Okay, now what are we are going to do? Okay. Now, uh, having uh, said that, we are going to uh, jump right in, and we're going to talk about both, uh, we're going to talk about neutral compatibility, which is Capricorn and Aquarius. The last one before I complete the series of Capricorn and Aquarius. And my management let me know, she let me know that I did not do this combination. And I thought I had, but I didn't. So uh, this is, by the way, a um, uh, strawberry martini. And of course, it's 4.04 in the morning. I got a tooth that's killing me, but I'm, 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 because I don't take medicine painkillers. I rough it. Rough neck! <laughs> I rough it. And my back, oh my God. Tell you, but thank God for my military training because I can handle the bitch. Okay. This is extra proof. And I and I I never this well my tooth. I don't have nerve pain. I have a dental pain because I'm a grinder. When you're a grinder, that's not good for the bone structure of your tooth. It can be very destructive, as, uh, but it's not as painful as a nerve pain. Otherwise, I could not be doing this video if I was in nerve pain. This is dental pain, which is different. But I can manage that until I go to a dentist uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, the next day, because I have alcohol in my system. And when you have alcohol in your system, you can't go to the dentist. The anesthesia is not good for the heart. See, I drug, but I'm a smart druggie, and I respect drugs. So, after like two days, let my body flush before I can go to the dentist, before they can put me with heavy anesthesia and start operating, because I always get dental surgery. And my teeth are very nice, and, and trust me, I paid a lot of money, and these are all my teeth. These are all my natural teeth, but it cost me a fortune to keep them that way at 51 with all the partying that I do, right? And still keep them pretty nice. Uh, I drink a lot of coffee and stuff like that, and sometimes it stains my teeth, and then I have to go like... But naturally, I still have... Okay. Okay. Enough narcissism. <laughs> you know I know, right? So, uh, But this is in keeping with the compatibility and neutral compatibility of science. We're dealing with Aquarius, fixed air, and Capricorn, cardinal Earth. The Earth King and the Earth Queen. This is a heavy combination of talk. So I knew I'm about to have my spliff. <laughs> so I got the roster. Why not have the spliff? <laughs> right? I'm 51. I can do that shit, right? Who do I got to answer to? Nobody. When you get to be my age, you'll love it. It'll be your second win to life. Okay? Wonderful. Your second Saturn return. I already feel it. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. You come into your own being. It don't happen at 30. It don't happen at 40. It happens at the mid-50s. That's when life begins again. Hopefully, many of you will make it to the second sign of return. There will be some of you that won't make it past the first. I'm sorry. You know, some people are only elected to live a certain amount of time. But for those of us who can live a little longer, 
It's all part of our human evolution. There were lifetimes where I lived only 30 years or 15 years. Now I'm awarded to live a little longer. And I'll take it. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Right? Oh, God. I got to learn how. One thing I never did well is smoke pot. I just never learned how to do that shit well. You know? I was too stiff. Even though I'm very fluid and very, you know, but see, that's the Capricorn in me. I remember Virgo, so I have uh, I have Capricorn as well, and I was raised by a Capricorn father. Okay, so Capricorn and uh, Aquarius. The first thing that we gotta ask ourselves is where do we find this combination in nature? Well, if you've seen all of my other videos concerning Aquarius, right, you know that I always attribute it to fixed air, which could be the stratosphere, the ionosphere, you know, that part of the ozone layer is also uh, fixed air. Our ozone doesn't change. It might change a few gradients here and there, but it don't break apart. Otherwise, there'd be no life on Earth because the rays of the sun are so powerful that it would destroy life on Earth. So the ozone layer is extremely protective. Thank God for that layer. If you know anything about the ozone layer, right? Do your homework now. If you know anything about the ozone layer, you will understand that it is made of many charged ionic particles. It's very electric. There's a lot of electrical storms beyond the ozone air, uh, ozone layer. No. Then you have the uh, the stratosphere, the ionic sphere. The ionic sphere is also Aquarius. And they call it the ionic sphere for a reason. There's a lot of electrical storms that go on in the ionic sphere. And there's a lot of uh, radicals of broken elements going on, which cause the charge for these electrical storms that occur in the ionic sphere. That's all Aquarius. That's all Uranus. That's fixed air. In this sense, Aquarius, Uranus, is acting very protectively. Don't you think? What does that remind you of? Doesn't that remind you of Saturn? Doesn't Saturn, isn't Saturn the great protector? The great lower giver, Papa. He, the God of form, Jehovah. Okay? Why do I mention him? Well, he's the ruler of Capricorn, for sure. But he's also the classical ruler of Aquarius. Remember, before Uranus was discovered in 1781, the ruler of Aquarius was Capricorn, the classical co-ruler today. Because well, after the discovery of Uranus, we appropriately assign Uranus the ruler of Aquarius. But Saturn continues to be its classical ruler, its esoteric ruler. So there's that. That's where you get that element of protectiveness. The ionosphere protects our Earth and the beauty. Right? Because I got to be dramatic. The beauty, the beauty of our Earth is protected by the ionosphere that doesn't allow the storms of Jupiter, the storms of our sun, the, 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 the what is it, what are they called? Those, the, those uh, waves that come out of the, the, the sun, right? That can be harmful to our Earth and everything in it. The ozone protects our Earth from the powerful and dangerous electromagnetic waves that come from the sun and from other planetary uh, phenomena out in deep space. So here we see Uranus, I mean Saturn, is classical co-ruler acting protectively, protecting the Earth, Mother, the Great Mother, which is Earth, which is Capricorn, the Earth King and the Earth Queen. The footstool in which we stand. 
Like he says in the Bible, the earth is my footstool and my head is the crown. It's in Deuteronomy and in Isaiah. So understand the beauty, the absolute beauty of Aquarius exalted through its classical co-ruler, which is Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, a cardinal sign. Mm. Lord, I need a drink after that. That was a lot. I don't even remember saying half the stuff. <laughs> I got to re up. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, in the morning, I've been doing the moon sign. Moon in Taurus. Okay, okay. That was about 10 second pause. So I owe you guys 10 seconds, okay? But I gotta be here because Judy ain't here now, you know? Okay. And I hire a whole new other staff to, to take care of everything else. Okay, so let's go right to it. So understanding that the ionosphere is a protective aspect of um, Uranus. How does this relate in reference to the human personality? But before we go there, let us now consider the Capricorn side. Capricorn represents the mountain and the goat, or the mountain goat. But in this sense, it doesn't match. So in this sense, the Earth itself is Capricorn, while the ionosphere is Saturn, um, Aquarius. So now you have Aquarius protecting the Earth. Also, if you look at the symbol of Aquarius, he's in the clouds. Is he in the clouds? That's the ionosphere. Because when you go beyond the clouds, you're in deep space. So the ionosphere ends where the clouds are. Where you, when the plane is flying, when I, when I do one of my travels, and I'm looking out at night, I see the stars in space, and I see the, the clouds underneath the plane. That, that division between the, the clouds and deep space, which we, I get to see when I travel at night, or I travel half across the world, one of them 20, 30 hour plane trips, you get to see and experience the division of the earth and deep space, which is the beginning. At that point, the plane is at 34,000 feet. It cannot go any higher or the plane ceases to function and it can actually crash right back onto the earth because now the engines will stop functioning and the earth, the plane will stop functioning when it reaches above 34,000 feet because now you're entering the vacuum of space. Understand the, how deep that is. So there is a gap of division. There is a layer here. The bottom layer being uh, Capricorn and the top layer being Aquarius. The ionosphere protecting the lower strata which represents reality here on Earth. So, we can look at this as a symbiotic mechanism between Capricorn and Aquarius where they can work in unison. And we're still talking about nature now. We're still talking nature. Wait until I wield it into the human ego and personality. Now, they give me a little music to keep me entertained with the drink and, and keeping the, the, the notes as I write them all down, you know, in the book that I have right in front of me and keep giving the notes. You know, it's a science, a mechanism, you know. I can't be drinking, do that, and keeping everything in a focus, you know. So thank God I have a team. <laughs> well, I, will, I won't be looking this cute. <laughs> oh, there goes my narcissism. At least I own it, you know. Come on, at least I own it. Give me that. Okay. Now, now that I, I explained the, the metaphor of Saturn, 
Uranus, Capricorn, and Aquarius. Now let's wield it into the human personality. How we see this dichotomy and beauty and principle of nature in the human personality. Well, you have to understand that Capricorn and Aquarius, we're talking about fixed air and cardinal earth. Okay? The cosmos, the cosmos, God himself, the universe, and then the earth itself, which is headed by a god or a king or a queen, either way. The earth cannot exist if it doesn't stand in the bed of dark matter in space. Dark matter is ruled by Aquarius, but it's also ruled by Saturn. Uh, the, 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 the fabric of space-time, if you go to my website and, and you look at my website, you know, on my medium.com anthropological series, I, I describe the fabric of space-time, the actual fabric in which the sun and other planets sit on. That's Aquarius, deep space. But it's also a scaffolding, so it's also Saturn, Capricorn. Do you see how Capricorn and Aquarius, Saturn and Uranus are merged together? Them two together create the fabric of space-time in which every every planet and every star system and every galaxy sits on. It's deep. Take a minute to let that sink in. This combination is extremely cosmic and deep. Of course, this is not going to be evident and obvious with the young couple below age 30 or the, or the personality, especially if they haven't reached age 30, they haven't reached a level of maturity and education and evolution. They might not be functioning at this level. This could be new souls. Aquarius, even though he represents the journey back to God, we might be talking to an unevolved Aquarius that's young, and is learning for the first time to be an Aquarius. And we could be dealing with a Capricorn who is not where he needs to be at the 10th level of initiation because he hasn't had enough incarnation to get to that level yet. So it really depends with what kind of level of personality and couple that you're dealing with. Are these highly evolved souls? Or are these lower evolved souls still functioning under the shadow aspect of the human personality? which is the lowest expression of the soul and its journey through each incarnation. If this is the case, what I'm talking about will not resonate to people born under Aquarius or Capricorn that are a couple right now. They're going to be, what the fuck is this guy talking about? They won't resonate or relate to what I'm talking about. Because this is on a deeper level. You have to understand that Aquarius is the 11th sign. He's the last step. He is the he is the gateway in which when you look back, you are not allowed to look back a second time. Now you must throw yourself into the abyss, which is Pisces, the point of no return. And the beginning of that mental breakdown and dissolution begins in Capricorn, the 10th sign, the gateway of initiation. When you cross that threshold, you are allowed to look back only once, but not twice. Know that your life will change forever once you reach Capricorn. And it could be for the good or for the better. You got to do this. I love you. I will always remember you. I love you. I can't look back. And you throw yourself into the abyss that awaits you. And God knows what it could be. It could be a reincarnating wheel back to the earth as a soul, as a, uh, depending on your common circumstances. Capricorn is the gateway. It is the point of no return. 
Aquarius, you are already committed. And there you decide whether you are to turn against yourself or against society or throw yourself back to God. Oh, it's a soap opera. And we're done with this segment for part one.